Good morning everyone, welcome back to another video and a video that I feel like I've been putting off for a little while now. Today we are doing a rental shoe challenge. So today we are going to be trying out the Scarpa Forces, which are the rental shoe option here at the Depot Sheffield. And we're going to be comparing them to my La Sportiva Squama, which are my current indoor shoe. I would wear these just on kind of like a average potter around the gym. What I would say immediately with these, if we do a side by side comparison, is that these have a much different profile to these. These are incredibly flat and quite shiny. <laughs> so I think that these are going to give me uh, a different challenge to I'm um, used to. So the plan for this session in rental shoes is to start right at the beginning of the grade boundary with some greens, which are the easiest grade here at the depot. And then we're gonna work our way up through the grades incrementally and see how far we can get before we can't climb in these rental shoes anymore. It should be said that we will get to a grade that I wouldn't be able to climb in my normal shoes, but it's which comes first, I think, will be interesting to see. So I can normally get to kind of like the purple set here at the depot and that would be my like project set so if i can get to the purple set and maybe do a couple of purples in these i'd be impressed but my expectations are low i think for me i'm a very like careful climber and i i find it very difficult to trust my feet at the best of times so i think this is going to introduce a, an element of fear and mistrust that I can't imagine it's going to help my climbing, but we'll see. So I feel like this um, climb is a really good example of where footwork comes more into play as you progress through the grades and you have to start relying not only on your footwork, but on different areas of your shoe. So for example, on this hold, on this climb, you could pretty much pace, place your shoe anywhere on this hold. Um, you could stick your whole foot on this hold and reasonably expect that it would stay whereas this hold is different if you put your whole foot on this hold it would probably slip off maybe it's best for me to show it in in action so like for example on this hold i could put my whole foot on the hold and because it's so big and because it's so positive i could probably reasonably expect that any position and orientation on my foot would stay whereas this hold is very different because if i put my whole foot on this hold it's less likely to be like a good foothold for me i'm gonna try and pick a black I'm going to try and pick one with small holds that really force precision because I feel like we've had the pick of some quite big generous holds so I think we need to test ourselves a little bit more. Oh no, let's do a pink. And then we can, because pink span V2 to V5. So if we pick a pink that looks somewhere in the middle. So this pink here looks like it's gonna start introducing things like heel hooks, which are gonna test these shoes in a different way. When I put these on, initially, one of my concerns was that the heel feels quite baggy, like there's quite a lot of room in the back i feel like once i put my heel on a hold there's going to be a lot of movement in it which is not always what you well it's never really what you want when you're using a heel hook you want to know that when you've got it on the hold that it's going to stay there okay
felt pretty good. I'm so far, I must admit, I'm surprised at how solid I feel in my feet. I'm quite impressed. Um, I think because it's in my mind that I've got a pair of rental shoes on and they're not my own shoes and I'm not familiar with them. I think the mental side of that is actually playing a bigger part in my session than the actual shoes. If you think something is holding you back, then it will hold you back. But it might not actually be holding you back as much as thinking that it's holding you back is holding you back. But now we're on to reds and I struggle with reds at the best of times. I've got the perfect red. I've tried this red before. This red makes use of a toe hook and it also makes use of a smear, which we haven't yet explored in these shoes. I think the smear is going to be more interesting than the toe hook, possibly. Sticky as anything. That felt fine. Again, I was looking down at my feet a lot and kind of willing them to stick. But the actual performance of the rubber was, it didn't slip. Toe hook felt fine. I can't fault them. <laughs> We've hit reds fairly quickly, um, which I'm really pleasantly surprised about. Um, but I also, I feel two things. I should pick a few rides that I've not done before <laughs> to give a bit of a, a fairer test. And I should also pick some reds that are on different kinds of wall. As we all know, I typically, if you'll have seen the last rhino video that I put up, I struggle ah. to keep my feet on on a hand. But not in these shoes. The holds on that climb are nice, so I think you can pull through your arms to avoid having to put much force through your feet. So I'd be interested to see what happens if we move on to an overhang that requires a little bit more technical footwork. Um, and also there's a red here which I was thinking about trying which is on very small footholds so you don't have much surface area to play with and technique I think becomes quite important footwork is very important throughout the whole climb so I'm going to try that one and see if that changes things but so far honestly I was expecting to have a bad session and I'm having a great session I feel great <laughs> these are like giving me so much confidence. Positive, but I think you definitely have to pick the right part of the hold and then angle your toe in the right way so you don't push yourself off as you pivot. And I think that's where like sensitivity becomes quite important in a climbing shoe. Um, it really helps to be able to feel the shape of the hold beneath your toe, at least I find. Um, I enjoy quite like a soft sensitive shoe. Um, whereas I feel in be on beginner shoes, quite often times the rubber is quite thick. I think because it has to be durable, they see a lot of wear. Um, they might get worn like 
10 times in a day. And I think it's fair to say that when you're new to climbing, maybe your footwork isn't that gentle. So I would imagine that climbing shoes see a lot of like heavy duty footwork. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is time for the purples. We're going to move into the purples, which are V5 to V7, which is 6C to 7A, right? Yeah. The purples are generally like my project level, so I wouldn't necessarily expect to be able to climb these even in my regular shoes. But now that I'm feeling so confident in these, I'm actually feeling quite good. I have it on authority from Nathan that this is quite footworky. Very steep. Very steep. Um, what would you say this is like 35, 40 degrees? More? I haven't tried this one before. It looks hard. I'm thinking that this is going to be going to be quite the test. But give it a go. See what happens. It's interesting, like, the mindset switch is interesting because I'm so focused on my feet, I was about to jump onto that climb without having, like, read what I wanted to do with my hands at all. Just another. Please, just another. <laughs> I didn't make that especially easy for myself. I misread it a little bit. But as far as footwork goes, I feel like a lot of those footholds aren't super positive. And the handholds aren't great. And I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't aware of not trusting my feet. I think from a um, not trusting that if I really like push down into a hold that the rubber would stick. I was kind of expecting to slip a little bit, but the, the first heel hook was great. I feel like it is a good hold to get the heel in, but it's not that great of a hold that it was given. And the first couple of handholds are pretty bad so it definitely was all in my feet and they performed fine I think any scrappiness was just me climbing it badly rather than the shoes but I find sometimes I, like on an overhang where I cut loose 
and I come back into the wall at quite a speed, aiming for a foothold. If you don't hit it just so, then you open yourself up to like slipping and sliding around and trying to get the foot on. But I don't feel like that happened. I feel like I made really good contact and it stuck. I'm gonna move on to a purple slab now, which is definitely a style that you have to be able to trust your feet. Yeah, I much prefer to have a less rounded, wide toe for this pocket, but I, I made it work. And then the rest of it, like this foot here, felt a little bit sketchy because the hands got quite bad pretty quickly. But again, it was nothing that these couldn't handle. So now I think I'm going to have to leave the safety of the purples behind and go for something uh, that I know is difficult for me. I'm going to move on to the yellows, which are B7+. Plus. Um, I can't typically climb yellows. It's very rare that I get a yellow at the depot, so it'll be interesting to see if these can get me up them. I think that the limiting factor on that climb wasn't the shoes. <laughs> it was the big move in the middle. So we find it, I think we should find another. Okay, scrap that, I'm gonna find another. I think we found like the big boss of the rental shoe challenge in this yellow here. So not only is it kind of like right at the max of my grade, if not a little bit further than what I can climb, but it's also on dual texture and it looks like the start few moves really require like a hell of a lot of force through the feet in a kind of smear position, I'm guessing, looking at the start of it. Should I try? Yeah, the foot sticks, but you really have to rock over on the right. And like, my leg was shaking for the amount of force I'm putting through it. So I'm definitely like not committing 100% because I'm worried that that toe is going to go. But the beauty of it is it's like this far off the ground. So I think I should just go for it and let the slip, let the slip happen. <laughs>
It is quite a big hold, but because it's triangular, you get like bad, 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 sweet spot in the middle, bad, bad, bad. And you have to do the foot swap either by kind of like pulling one foot out, replacing with another, or you have to use the bad bit of the triangle. But using the good bit and like sweeping the foot out, it's quite like a janky movement that I'm struggling to like hold with my shoulders. Whereas I think the, the peel on, peel off using the bad bit might feel more tenuous, but is less, more stable. Ooh. So I think the results of this experiment for me were that you can actually climb to pretty close to your standard in rental shoes. The shoes themselves don't make a huge amount of difference. I think through the upper grades closer to my project level, the shoes did make enough of a difference that I wouldn't opt to wear these every single session. Overall, these wouldn't be my everyday shoe, but I think it was actually a really valuable lesson to me to have a session in rental shoes to realize that I completely take my footwork for granted quite often when I'm climbing. Because I went into the rental shoe challenge thinking that I would really struggle with my footwork, I really focused on my footwork. And I wonder if because of that, my footwork was a lot better than it normally is. If you do have any questions about climbing shoes and how to pick the right climbing shoes for you, Nathan and I are planning a video all about climbing shoes and how to pick your pair so if you do have any questions climbing shoe related leave them in the comment section below and we will try to get around to them when we film that video but until then goodbye and i'll see you in my next one